The panda's a classic example of what I'm talking about. The panda story. The panda was the Bigfoot Sasquatch of the 1800s. Word kept coming out of China of a black and white bear that ate only bamboo. Vegetarian bear. Well, every, I mean every, so-called expert in the world that knew anything about bears said, well, you have white bears, you have black bears, you have brown bears, but you don't have two-tone bears, and they're all omnivores. They eat anything. They don't specialize in leaves of any kind. So, ipso facto, we can tell sitting right here in our desk that this is all wrong. Totally BS. The Chinese don't know what they're talking about. They're seeing things. And then in 1869, a French naturalist got one. Got one. Brought it in, got it to Paris, and the world knew, knew these things were real. And so every museum and major university in the world mounted a field, a, a, a research team, put them into the field in Sichuan Province, China, which is about the size of your state here. Sichuan Province, China, about the size of your state. Very rugged, mountainous terrain like you have here, covered wind bamboo forests, just like your forests, but otherwise the same bamboo forest. And they were just attacked by well funded, well-equipped search teams to be the first to bring in that next panda. How long do you think it took? How long do you think it took? These are good woodsmen. These are people like Bob Gimlin. Lots of them back then. 60 years. 60 years. Now, you, you say, well, you, you've got to be exaggerating. Yeah, I am. They quit after about 30 and said, well, it was just a fluke has to be extinct now. And then 30 years later, Teddy Roosevelt's sons were over there doing some hunting, just hunting, you know, and shot one out of a tree. And they knew it was real. So then they crank up that machine again, but they had learned a lot by that point. And over the next 20 years, they brought in a half a dozen. And you want to do a good screenplay. I used to work in Hollywood. You want to do a good screenplay. Guess who got the first two? A woman. A woman named Ruth Harkness. Great story. All these macho men out there, you know. <laughs> and she goes out and she nails it on her first try. And boy, there is so much sour grapes. And they say, oh, you got lucky, oh, man, you got lucky, lucky, lucky. Next year, she does it again. Stuffs it up their nose. Man, I love stuff like that. <laughs> Take this. Boy, I love that. Anyway, the panda. Now, what's the panda doing? Why, why, what is the panda doing to be so wonderfully elusive for 60 years. Well, you, you see the deal. It lives in a green world, and it's, it's colored black and white. Lives in the daytime, easy to spot. It's out there, living in the daytime. Got to eat, got to move. Slow moving, not fast. You've seen them in a zoo. Stupid as a bag of hammers. I mean, just dumb. Can't even have sex and reproduce hardly in a zoo. We are not talking smart, intelligent, fast-moving, nighttime living creatures. We're talking nincompoops. Now, compare that to Sasquatch, Bigfoot, and any other hominoid. Compare that to monkeys, chimps or gorillas. The, what was the problem? The problem was with us. It wasn't with them, it was with us. We think we're great in their environment. We suck in their environment. And that proved it. That proved it. And we're the same in the environment of any hominoid you care to name. We suck in their environment. We think we're great. We think we're masters of all we survey. As I just showed you, we don't even survey all we claim to be masters of. I hope you're getting a very different worldview out of this because I've got a very different worldview than what I was taught. And I think you should too. Next slide. You say to me, well, okay, by George, we're humans. Why don't we just go out there and get one? Even so, we can do anything. Why don't we just mount up and go get one if there's so many of them out there? All right, panda's a perfect example of what the problem is. The panda was last century's hominoids. Rumors would come out of China 
of this black and white bear that ate bamboo. And of course, every PhD in the world sitting behind his little desk does not even have to get his fanny up out of the chair to say, well, forget that. They, we know they have black bears. We know they have brown bears. We know they have white bears. But they're all carnivores. No vegetarian bears. You kidding us? Ridiculous. And then in 1869, a French naturalist goes to Sichuan Province, China, and sees the hide of a freshly killed one hanging on the wall, and he knows they're real. So every zoo and museum mounts up the expeditions that you would like to see mounted up today to go out to find the next panda and bring it in. Serious. Now, we're talking Sichuan Province, uh, an area the size of the state of Arizona, very mountainous, hilly terrain, difficult terrain, covered with bamboo rather than woods, but in every other respect, like the environment that hominoids will be found in. How long do you think it took those teams, and this is back in the 1800s where people really knew their way around the woods, how long do you think it took? 60 years, and quit, quit giving away my punchlines. Don't do that anymore. 60 years, 60 years. Those of you who've seen the movie do not give away the punchlines. Okay, now it sounds like a gross exaggeration, and it is. They only looked for about 30 years. This is where Ivy made the mistake. They only looked for about 30 years, and then they gave it up. And they said it has to be extinct now. And then 30 years later, Teddy Roosevelt's sons are out there doing some sport hunting, and they kill one. Okay? So then they mounted up again, knowing that they, it's for real now. And because they had learned so much in the interim, they began to get them. And over the next 20 years, they brought in six. And we have the panda craze you know, that we have today. But even to this day, they're extremely difficult to go out into the wilds of Sichuan Province, China, and bring in a wild panda. Now, what is the panda doing that makes it so difficult to get one? Well, as you can see, it's very brightly colored and stands out very distinctively against its green background. <laughs> it lives during the day. It eats a very restricted diet, bamboo. It's very slow moving. You see them move in zoos. They're as stupid as a bag of hammers. They can't even reproduce in zoos. Can't even find each other and, or figure it out. I mean, <laughs> how, how stupid do you have to be? Anyway, point is, they're not doing anything. They're living their lives, and the problem lies with us. We can't hack it in their world very easily. We think we're masters, again, of the world. We're not. We're not. And where they live is where the hominoids live. And the hominoids are bigger, faster, stronger, operate at night, eat anything in their world. They can hear better, see better, and I'm absolutely sure think better than we can. We're not going to just mount up and go get one because we've tried it many times and it hasn't worked. We're only going to see them by accident, encounter them by accident. And that's when it happens, and it happens a lot. We have good evidence on record of these encounters. Next slide. We're going to go over a few. 